All right, welcome back. This is lesson two on logarithms. This is about the laws of logarithms. Uh, like before, you're just going to need some paper on which to make notes. Now, we know various laws of indices that you've been using for years, and based on these, we can actually derive some key laws of logarithms. And the um, derivations of these laws can be found in your textbook if you're interested. And they are quite interesting, but they're not necessary for this course, so I'm going to move past them and just look at the laws themselves for logarithms and how we can use them. Now the first one deals with multiplication within a logarithm, which links to addition. So the multiplication addition rule. And it's based on this law of indices, a to the power m times a to the power n is a to the power m plus n. Okay, you add the powers. And what we can get from this is that the log of b times c is simply equal to the log of b plus the log of c. So you can see that it links the multiplication bc within the logarithm to the addition of two separate logarithms. And it doesn't matter what the base is, a, as long as it's the same base all the way through. So for example, um, log to the base 5, uh, sorry, log of 5 plus log of 3, we just multiply the 5 and the 3, and that can be rewritten as log of 15. Uh, to give you another example, uh, log to the base 2 of 3x plus log to the base 2 of 2x. Again, we multiply the two things using this rule, and we can write it as a single logarithm. Uh, 3x times 2x is 6x squared. And although I've used um, these two examples to show uh, combining two logarithms into a single one, it can also be used the other way around to split a single logarithm into two, which you'll see later. Anyway, the second law links division within a logarithm to the subtraction of two logarithms. And it's based on this law of indices, which you know very well. And what we can get from that is the following. The log of b divided by c is simply equal to the logarithm of b minus the logarithm of c. And again, it doesn't matter what the base is, as long as you use the same base all the way through. Um, so let's just look straight away at some examples uh, of how to use that. If we take the logarithm to the base 3 of 12 minus log to the base 3 of 6, by this rule I can just do 12 divided by 6 within the logarithm. So a subtraction of two separate logs becomes division within the log. And of course 12 divided by 2, sorry 12 divided by 6 is just 2. Um, but let's go the other way. If we've got logarithm of x divided by 100, that's simply equal to the log of x minus the log of 100. We find these very useful um, in solving equations and doing all sorts. And finally we have a law which deals with powers within logarithms. Um, so yeah, let's call it the power rule. And it's based on this law of indices, which you should be familiar with. And what we can get from that um, is that n times the log of b is equal to the log of b to the power n. So again, the base has to be the same. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's the same. And if you look at what we've got here, this number n appears on one side as the power. On the other side, it's multiplying the whole logarithm. And that's the only difference. So we see that we can take a power out and put it in the front, or we can take a number that's in front and bring it inside. So, for example, uh, the logarithm of 9, we could write as log of 3 squared, and then take the 2 out the front using this rule to get 2 log 3. To give you one more example, let's take the log of x cubed. The power we can simply bring out to the front and write 3 times the log of x. Okay, so those are the three rules. Let's now put them in action and see what they can do. The first example we are looking at evaluating logarithms, so just working out the value of a logarithm. And we're going to do two examples, log to the base 3 of 243 and log to the base 2 of a quarter. Now for this one we will need to consider what power of 3 would give us 243. Um, so we just work through it, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, and we find that 3 to the power 5 is equal to 243. And that tells me, from, if you remember from last lesson, that 5 is actually the value of this logarithm. It's the power that we need to raise 3 to. But we're going to just work it out a slightly different way. I'm going to replace 243 with 3 to the power 5. And you wouldn't need to do this in an exam. This is just to illustrate 
the law because now we can take the five out to the front using the power law, law three. Um, and well, we know from before that log to the base three of three is simply one. So the answer is five. We'll try a similar approach with this one. Two to the power what is a quarter? Well, a quarter is one over four, so one over two times two, which is one over two squared, and we can write that as two to the power minus two. So again, the power that we need to raise the base to to get a quarter is minus two. That's going to be my answer. But I'll look at it the same way just to work it through. Replace a quarter with two to the power minus two. Use the power rule to bring that minus two to the front, and I'm left with minus two times log to the base two of two, and log to the base two of two is one. So we get the answer minus two. Right, next um, we're going to be combining logarithms using these rules to make a single logarithm. So uh, for the first one we've got log two plus log five. Uh, simply using um, the multiplication addition rule, I can make that the log of two times five, so it's simply the log of 10. Easy peasy. Uh, let's try something different. Um, the log of 48 minus the log of six, and that's just going to be using the division slash subtraction rule, and it's simply going to be the log of 48 divided by six. So your answer is log of eight. Uh, let's try a slightly harder one. Two log five plus three log two. Okay, we're gonna have to use this rule here first because we can only add single logarithms together. So two log five, I can write as log of five squared and three log two, I can write as log of two cubed using the power rule. And replace five squared with 25, two cubed with eight we're left with something which we can deal with using this rule again, the multiplication addition rule. I simply have to do 25 times eight. So I get my answer log of 200. Right, for the next example, we're gonna be going the other way. We're gonna be splitting up logarithms into their component parts. So express in terms of log A and log B the following. So for A, we have log of A squared B. Well, I can straight away use this rule to split out the a squared part and the b part into two logarithms added together. And I notice that I've got a squared, so I can use the power rule here to bring the two to the front and write two times log a plus log b. And that is my answer in terms of log a and log b. Next, let's have one with a division in it. So b cubed over a, I want to split that out Using the division slash subtraction rule, I can split out the b cubed and the a parts into two separate logarithms. And again, use the power rule to bring the three to the front. So three log b minus log of a. This one here, let's try something. Let's make it a bit harder. Um, a divided by the square root of b. So again, I've got a division, so I can use the division subtraction rule to write the log of a minus the log of root b. Um, but to get this in terms of log b, I need to rearrange this last bit. I need to rewrite it as b to the power of half, because then I can use this power rule one more time and bring the half in front like that and write log a minus a half log b. Right, finally, example four, this is about solving equations. And we'll see some examples that work differently later on, but the general method for now is to take logs of both sides. And we use base 10 because that's simplest and that's what our calculator does most easily. So three to the power x equals four. Well, if I take logs of both sides, I get this and I can use the power rule. That's the whole point. I can bring the power x out to the front. So x log three is equal to log four and log three and log four, they're just numbers. Okay, we don't know exactly what they are but the numbers, so I can divide by log three like I would divide by any other number. So x is simply equal to log four divided by log three. And you can get on your calculator. Be careful with brackets. You may need to close brackets after each log statement. 
but check that you can get that 1.26 to three significant figures. And be careful, this is not the same as the log of four over three. Okay, don't fall into that trap. Right, part B, uh, slightly more complicated, five to the power x plus two is equal to 101. Again, we start the same way, take logs of both sides of my equation. So the log of five to the x plus two is equal to the log of 101. And again, use the power rule. In this case, the power is x plus two. I bring all of that to the front times the log of five, that's equal to log of 101. And just like uh, part A, I can divide by log five in this case. Five is, log five is just a number. So log of 101 divided by log five, and what we'll I have to do to get x is to subtract the two from that. So I end up with log 101 divided by log five minus two. And if you put all that in your calculator, you should get 0.868 to three significant figures. Well, okay, that's all for now. Um, see you in the next lesson.